All right, hello guys. How's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about our Winter Thoughts series. We're just going to be making a new installment because a lot has changed in the Ento, actually. Our La Nina has evolved into a different type of La Nina that could mean different things than what is typical with a normal La Nina. <laughs> Before we get into things, be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. For today's comment of the day, I want to know which month do you think will be the snowiest and coldest of the entire winter? What is your prediction? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video, and first things first, we're taking a look at our 90-day temperature anomalies, and this is from the past. Uh, and as you can see, there's been a lot of colder air there for areas near Alaska uh, and the neighboring regions of Russia that are oh so close to Alaska there, also regions of Greenland. And this has led towards above average ice development and above average snowfall. And these things are important because this leads towards uh, colder air being able to make its way into those regions because of the ice underneath, because of the snow underneath. It all just kind of works like a... Uh, snowball effect. That's a good analogy, right? It just builds up and it becomes colder and colder and colder. The colder air leads towards more ice and snow. The ice and snow leads towards more colder air uh, and it just accelerates like that. So when we see this type of a development, uh, it does lead us to believe that more cold air will be available uh, for the upcoming winter. Now here was our last installment, the, the surface ice and snow cover. Uh, and this was as of November 7th, our last installment. You can see there's plenty of snowfall for northern Canada, areas of Alaska, Greenland, Russia, and the ice is those orange regions, which was taking up, I would say, an above average uh, size uh, of that region up there in the northern hemisphere. Uh, but as we move towards the 15th here today, the update from today, you can see the snowpack has expanded greatly, especially throughout Canada. In Russia, it's kind of expanded. Areas south of Russia, it's really diminished a little bit, but those regions matter probably the least out of all of these regions, for the United States at least. But for Alaska, Canada, Greenland, and Russia, the, the most important regions for us, this has expanded. Also, the ice has expanded at an average to above average pace, I would say, but at least average. Uh, it's been expanding, and we have very nice ice coverage this year, which again is just going to help that colder air be even more potent uh, than what is typical really. Here is those sea surface temperature anomalies and you can you can see our La Nina, it's that blue band there right in the middle. Uh, and the important thing here is there's a, a few different types of La Ninas, but the biggest ones are gonna be your west-based or your east-based La Ninas. And that basically means where is the coldest water located? If it's in the west near uh, areas like, you know, Australia, just to the north of Australia, south of Hawaii there, kind of in that region where there's a lot of islands in there in the Pacific. If the coldest water is in that region, that would be a west-based La Nina. And these usually favor colder air in the western United States. Uh, but what we see in this case is that it's an eastern-based La Nina. We see very potent cold water there closer to South America, and it becomes less potent the further west we go. This usually encourages colder air for the western uh, or sorry, the, the central and eastern United States and warmer air there for the western United States. Another development is that PDO, which is the area north of this Ento region, has become less cold. We can see that some warmer water has made its way in, and usually colder water in that region leads towards some colder air in the west, but the warmer water making its way in does kind of lean, lean us to believe that this could be a little bit of some warmer air down the road making its way into the western United States. Here's a look at the North Atlantic, and as you can see, still things are just very warm overall. We do see some colder waters near the coastal regions of the East Coast and the Gulf Coast. This does help some colder air be able to make its way in a little bit easier than if there was warmer water around. The water does influence the air, so that's the reason for that. Let's take a look at the seven-day change globally, and as you can see, that eastern base region there in our Ento region has taken a dramatic cooling uh, period here over the past seven days. You can see the temperatures have dropped by two to five degrees Celsius here in these regions. So yes, it is really evolved over the past week or so into a very east-based La Nina. And I'm excited to see how this plays out. I'm excited to see if this continues to develop in this direction or how it evolves down the road. 
But as of right now, this is setting up for a best case scenario for cold and snow lovers in the east. As we take a look at the North Atlantic, things haven't changed that much. That's been the trend for quite a while now, to say the least. Here's our Nino 3.4 index chart. And as you can see, things have been dr dramatically cooling over the past two months. Things warmed a bit and then they've started to cool again. So it had a little bit of an uptrend there in the temperatures, but it has been cooling at the same pace. It just kind of corrected a little bit warmer. I don't know why I always talk about this like it's a stock. It's actually <laughs> temperatures on the earth. So I don't think that corrections really exist, but uh, that's what it looks like to me. Now here is the Nino 1 plus 2 index. So this is actually just measuring that east-based region in our ENSO. And as you can see, this area has never really warmed and it's been dramatically cooling and this is the coldest region of the entire ENSO right now uh, and again this leads us to believe there could be more cold and snowy conditions in the eastern half of the country than a normal La Nina would indicate. Now here is our temperature anomalies according to the CFS monthly model here for November. As you can see for the rest of November we expect colder conditions in the east, uh, warmer conditions in the west overall. And then here's the December forecast, warm in the west, cold in the east overall, uh, a winter lover's dream here in the east. January is a bit of a, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, it's a bit of a horseshoeing pattern. Uh, we see that there is some colder air making its way into the central United States mostly, as well as the northeastern United States, but the southeast ridge takes over for the month of January. You can see from Florida all the way up through Massachusetts, the eastern seaboard, is slightly warmer than normal. This does not mean you won't see snow really. Uh, this just means that, you know, oftentimes it'll be warmer than normal. There will still be cool downs likely in between, but overall for the entire period of December, it's gonna be warm more times than it will be cold. That's what that means. But February comes in with a, with a bang and it really makes up for how January goes because as you can see, this looks a lot like my winter forecast. The Northwest in through the North Central United States and it dives down into basically all of the eastern two-thirds of the country with that colder air. And overall, here's the winter forecast. Uh, according to our CFS monthly model, December through February, we could see colder up there for the northwest, north central, south central, and then the eastern United States from there. We see a bit of a southeast ridge taking over for the entirety of the winter. But again, minimal impacts here. I think the more important note is that Arctic blasts will be abundant uh, and they will oftentimes make their way to the southeast. It's just when there isn't a Arctic blast in place, uh, you could see some warming in between, uh, and it's just warm more times than not. But if a storm matches up with the Arctic blast, don't worry. You will see snow throughout the winter likely. Well, that depends on where you're at, obviously. If you're in Florida, I can't say that for sure. But if you're in um, New Jersey or Pennsylvania, I could say that with certainty. Now, here is the northern hemisphere. This is important because we see that the Arctic regions have warmer than normal air around. You can see the reds there. That is a negative Arctic oscillation. What this does is it forces the cold air to go other places like Canada, United States, Russia. You can see the, the Arctic air blasts away from the Arctic regions into the surrounding lower regions like Canada, United States, Russia, like I said. So this is what we're seeing uh, and this is a huge indication that there could be a lot of frigid air this upcoming winter compared to normal. Real quickly, here's the precipitation forecast as well. Again, northwest above average. We see the Ohio Valley and interior northeastern United States above average as well with drier conditions down there for the southern United States. This is on par, both the temperature and the precipitation forecast, on par with our earliest winter forecast. Our winter forecast has not evolved too much because... We've been consistently seeing the signs that this would be the pattern. And now this model, I mean, this is probably four months after our first winter forecast and it looks identical to our winter forecast. So I'm very happy with how that's gone so far. Uh, again, like I always say, our, our final update is coming up uh, uh, probably like the very last couple of days of November. We will have our final winter forecast out for you guys. So stay tuned for that. And then real quickly, the model prediction for the ENSO, you can see we dip a little bit more, but we are headed towards an El Nino likely towards next summer, which is going to bring a whole different pattern. Uh, and I'm excited to talk about that in the pretty far future as well. For today's confidence tab, we're at a four out of six. This is a good place for a long range forecast. I don't want to go any higher or any lower. I feel good about that. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, out of all the Arctic blasts we expect for the month of November, do you think any of them will be very potent? 
And James Marr said, I believe one of these Arctic Blasts could be very potent and could also bring snowfall chances. Uh, and that's definitely what I'm seeing as well. So good comment of the day there. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Little the Pan, Mandy Birchfield, and Patrick Strickland as well. I'd also like to thank our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Kudalasa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Alan Goodmaven, Bill Dallas, Gary's, John Khaleesi, Dwight Phelan, Stephen Cronenthal, and Thomas D. Barr as well. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Catbite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox also. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.